So when you think about 19th century American literature, uh, a few names probably really immediately jump into mind, like maybe Herman Melville or Emily Dickinson, and um, this guy too, the, the guy who wrote the book I happen to have in my hand, except this book and the next book are, are both written by uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne, but I'm not going to be reviewing The Scarlet Letter, I promise. These are two of his novels that really don't uh, get, well, read pretty much anymore. I don't really see a lot of them reviewed on um, BookTube, certainly. So um, the first one that I want to talk about, um, after this I'm going to post a review of another, this is the Blythedale Romance, with that nice little bucolic painting of big Jersey cows and and rolling hills in the background. Um, so after reading The Scarlet Letter, which I won't talk about much, um, years ago in school, I think I read it in school, um, and uh, after this I'll talk about the other novel, in relatively close conjunction with one another, there really seems to be a common thread running through a lot of Hawthorne's novel-length fiction, and that is the sort of deep and uh, abiding mistrust in any kind of idea of utopia. Progress, perfectibility, especially any of these as applied to uh, humankind. Hawthorne came, uh, as you probably know, from a long line of Puritans, uh, one of whom even presided over some of the Salem witch trials in uh, the late 17th century now uh, writing on the cusp of the american civil war he feels the renewed need for a kind of pragmatic skepticism about human nature um, one generation later um, an entire generation of american philosophers will of course call for uh, henry james dewey uh, people like that um, there's so the, the narrator of this novel is a guy named Coverdale. He's a sort of a naive narrator uh, in search of this agrarian source of truth. Um, of course, there's this long American distrust of cities and um, especially crowded cities that are full of disease and your neighbors are less than a mile away from you, that's much too close. Um, so he discovers this little community called Blythedale, perfectly named, right? Um, even then, sort of the name itself should set off bells of suspicions in your head. It's this community built around the ideals of the, uh, the French sociologist by the name of Fourier, uh, he was a, a French utopian social theorist uh, who was a real guy. He's not a, really a character in the novel. Fourier thought that life could be optimized through a kind of rationalistic social engineering, um, the basic living unit of which he called uh, the uh, phalanstere, or the uh, phalanstere. Uh, the hilarious sort of hilarious in that subtle, dowdy, Puritan way that was uniquely Hawthorne's. The hilarious part is that once everyone in Blythedale is introduced into the mix, tensions, different ideas, passions, and ideologies start to bubble to the surface, showing just what a pipe dream Fourier's utopia really is. Hawthorne's point seems to be that holding rationality primary over contingency and human emotion is pretty short-sighted and silly. Uh, not only is Blythedale a folly, but the very idea of a utopia is a sheer impossibility, he seems to be saying. I'm sure that Hawthorne would have us remember the clever lesson from Thomas More's Utopia. Uh, I mean, that it means quite literally the word utopia means no place. <laughs> you Topos, nowhere, no place. I'll forego a lot of the plot details because um, at the time when I wrote this review, I had already read it several months in the past and wouldn't really be able to, to do them too much justice. Plus, I, 
when I can avoid plot spoilers, I, I really appreciate that, and I'm sure anyone who might stumble across this video would appreciate it too. Um, well, I have uh, unpacked here, what I have unpacked here is just sort of what jumped out at me um, while I was reading it. Um, there's a strange woman in the novel uh, named Zenobia who always wears a fresh flower in her hair, who turns out being the half-sister of a Blythedale foundling by the name of Priscilla. And the novel culminates in a set of sort of philosophical disagreements between Coverdale and Hollingsworth, um, who is a sort of ironically patriarchal figure who, uh, who whose presence sort of hangs over the community of, of Blythedale. I found the plot somewhat contrived and unrealistic, as, as you do when, you know, the, the author seems to be more interested in hammering home the point and, and making sure that you understand the lesson than in telling a truly good story. Um, but still very much a worthwhile read, simply, if no other reason, because it's Nathaniel Hawthorne. Uh, the action is based on Hawthorne's experiences, by the way, his real-life experiences, at a place called the Brook Farm, a very well-known utopian community in its own right, where he spent most of 1841, uh, largely in an effort to save money for his marriage. Uh, he would marry Sophia Peabody of the famous Peabody sisters. If you don't know them, go look them up. They're very important figures in 19th century history, too. Um, he would marry uh, Sophia Peabody in July of 1842. So uh, he lived there to save some money, and this was the product of his stay. The Blythedale Romance by Nathaniel Hawthorne. 